Pennington is leading the, the whole series with 21 tries. So uh, that's great news for Canadian fans, a lot of whom are here in town as it's the closest tournament to, uh, to Canada for these players. Well, coming in uh, to this tournament, the ranking, Kenya. They had a good outing in the first in Australia. Did not play particularly well in South Africa, but had a barn burn the last week against New Zealand. And right now in second place with 56 points. And then the North American contingent for the neighbors of the hosts. Well, there's Sean Duke leading it out. Uh, he's been a force. But uh, part of the experience down here are the fans. There's 49 teams on the field next door in the Las Vegas Invitational competing. And some of them are coming over to support. But let's not forget this support for this team, Kenya. Uh, huge traveling support within the United States. Alex Rees will be our referee for this match from France. Game three, big three-day weekend. The first time that we've gone three days here in Las Vegas. And uh, there's such great anticipation. They're expecting sellouts on Saturday and Sunday here. Well, I think Vegas. we got up to 60,000 last year in uh, total, and they're already hoping to surpass that. So uh, great occasion for North American rugby all around. I think the seventh game is going to catch on. <laughs> well, this uh, fixture obviously is part of uh, who will be where uh, Kenya, South Africa, Canada, and Uruguay will contest it all. So, a well, free kick against long break, uh, yeah. Kenya. You don't see that very often. Referee Alex Ruiz from France. Just so saying get going. It took too long to get going. Yeah. So. And we've talked about that with referees. If, if someone is supposed to have been delaying the game, he's just going to give a free kick the other way. So Canada begins that way with a free kick. A little bit of movement and free a bit of a risk to get it started. Kick, kick. On the attack is Connor Trainer. Canada, deep inside Kenya territory. They move it down to the 22-meter line. And the first penalty will go against Canada. And they yeah, that was away. Tyler Ardron on the ground, holding on, not releasing. So uh, Kenya dodged the bullet after giving up possession right off the kickoff. Canada pressing their defense up, challenging Kenya. Are you going to play it from behind your 22? They sure are. Man outside, so they take it into tackle. Canada resets the defense. Looking for a turnover down here. Kenya. Several out wide. Here comes the Canadian defense. Then, but don't break. In the tackle goes Otieno. He's a big, hard runner. Here's Forrest. Good recycle by Kenya. Again, coming off a great weekend in Wellington last week. Breaking the line that time. Ambaka. Multiple phase rugby by Kenya. Great discipline, and there's the break on the loose is Collins and Jara. And Jara headed towards the corner. And Jara into touch about five meters out. How about that race? Well, no signal yet. And uh, Taylor Paris was the sweeper on in Jara. Let's have a little look here. Paris comes right across, and he's obviously trying to hold this ball up so Jara can't ground it. See if he can get his body under the ball. I see a touch flag, though, about five meters out. Touch just a hand step down, no try. Well. And he does get an arm under it. And uh, the referees may even be having a quick peek in the stadium here. And they have awarded the line out. So great play by Taylor Paris in the sweeper roll. Uh, Canada's stop, just going to, I'll use stop. one of the ice hockey terms, ice this puck <laughs> all the way down to the other end and make... Kenya start again. And of course, there is a strong wind here out in the desert going from right to left on your screen. So Canada taking advantage of it. And Kenya, bizarrely kicking straight to the midfield, straight back to uh, Hariyama. Great opportunity for Nate Hariyama. Number three score on the circuit. Played 15. He tosses that away. ill advised pass. Boy, both teams playing very loose with possession here in this first half. Well, there is an overlap three on one at the top of your screen. That's Moonlight. And the defense covers. Moonlight takes it into tackle. And once again, Canada knocking at the door just outside the 22. Duke with a chip ahead. Races on. Duke headed towards the try zone. Touch it down. Try Canada. Well, that is pure confidence. That's try number 22 on the circuit. He got five last week, as we said. I think he'd had enough of his team messing around. And he just chipped it in for himself. The referee had a quick question right, for his in-goal judge. The watch here, he saw the space. The sweeper was not in place for Kenya. He had the pace to get by him, and as long as the bounce didn't take him away, he pounced on it just in time. Great individual effort from Sean Duke.
22 events for Sean Duke, and you start to see the confidence and wisdom on the pitch that time. So the opportunity, nobody back sweeping, take advantage of it. A great kick, a good race, and he's got the try. That is one of the things. It's, it's a young team, but it's relatively experienced. You talked about Hiriyama, Duke, Moonlight, Trainer. These guys have been on the circuit for a little bit, and they're not intimidated by anyone. The Kenyans had a bit of a bizarre shot. We'll have a look at say, Hiriyama trying to put this one through. Hiriyama, so solid wow. as usual. Conversion attempt. Let's have one more look at this try. On the board. Seven Absolutely. Over Kenya. There's your like. So a big shift from uh, Kenya possibly getting yeah, yeah, first blood. Yeah. After the review there, no try given, and Canada on the board for a quick seven. Seven points nil. Hearn with the restart. Hiriyama in the mix. Ball bobbled by Kenya behind the 22. Watch out now. Ayuma. Ball taken into tackle by Kenya. And the press so far with Canada's defense, keeping the good line, making it very difficult for Kenya to escape. Done a lot of work on it. Again, bending, not breaking, as you said. There, the ball pops out, but Harry is in an offside position. I think on the previous series, Dave, we had five side to sides for Kenya, but no real advantage. Dangerous advances. play tackle on Canada. No. We have above the shoulders. They don't want to see that anymore. So, from behind the 22, here comes Kenya again on the penalty. <laughs> Difficult to bring down, but finally they do. Four out wide on two. And to the near side. Here comes Kenny trying to set up something with a misdirection. Taking space that time is Wanjala. Ooh, tough Adema. And now they try to cross it back. That time the pass to Injero running the right angle. Well, I'll tell you what. How difficult it is it to contain <laughs> Kenyan runners right now? Great leg drive. They're very hard to put on the deck. And they're, they're really big, actually. They don't, it doesn't appear so much on the field. But one of the bigger sides on the circuit, when you see them in the meal room, um, there's some big, strong athletes out there. John Moonlight, very, very busy on defense against Kenya. 7-0 in favor of Canada. First half, game three. Five. 2013 HSBC Sevens World Series from Las Vegas. Another good tackle that time by Hiriyama. He does so many things well defensively, don't uh, offensively. You don't think much of his defense, but he's a short tackle man. Penalty he against Canada. There, Canada came in as a side entry at that ruck. So with just uh, under a minute here, Kenya's still in possession. And two Kenyans late getting up. Now they're prepared to play again. And then a slip that time by Adema. His entire body's out there in the defensive line for Canada in black. Broken down and another penalty. The tap and over for the try. Go Kenya. 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 Collins and Jarrah. Who else? In his number in the defense for Kenya. And he's got Collins the dancing here in the stadium. There's no substitute Kenya. for experience. He is the talisman for this team. Michael Friday's group have come together. Had a great performance last week as we talked about. But so much that happens around that man. Um, you see him pumping there. The ball has barely been out of play here, Dave, in the first half. And so there were some tired bodies, and Canada's defense broke down. And what great sights to see here in Las Vegas, that uh, Kenyan support traveling and uh, makes such an impact uh, when their team's uh, in trouble as they were there. In the you bring up something very interesting, Gareth. That, that conversion was a seven and is half good, half and, and that is it. The and that's going to knot it here at halftime. But it's interesting you bring it up, Gareth. People who and may not follow seven Kenya, all the time, you say they only play for seven minutes. <laughs> oh, that must be so simple. So we got the same size field as we have for 15s, obviously, but less than half the players on there. So uh, incredibly tiring. That's what Gary John has to say. Let's go inside the Canadian. Coming <laughs> down. Put him on the floor. Right? Work for each other. Work for each other. Don't do that now. Right? Good game. Is that what we start? Right? Mike Friday busy. It's only time, bro. And I'll respect. Now you've got to get put him on the ball. If the extra pass will make a difference. We're all tied up okay? in the half. Let me hear Kenya. you, Kenya. Right? The pass is going to move it. It's going to hurt. It was a very interesting contrast. 
listening to the two coaches. The Canadians saying, get them down on the deck. And the Kenyans saying, throw the extra pass. Very simple. Mike Friday saying, you're faster, you're fitter, you're stronger. But well, we're going to find out in the next seven minutes. Really key that Canada does need to put them on the ground. Too many Kenyan players stepping out of the tackle and uh, putting those long phases of play together. But uh, really a well-balanced test here. They set it out right at the start. Two teams that were in good form last week and are full of confidence. All right, let's go into the second half now. It's not a boxing match. Oh, no, <laughs> big Sonny Bill just uh, got saved at the bell, we understand, in his boxing match. But uh, look at that domination. Brother, on the tour. Kayunga. Yeah. All right, with ball in hand is Kieran Hearn, known as the Newfie from Newfoundland. He is Conception Bay South. And uh, he's kicking into this win, so we'll be able to hang this kickoff up in the air, see if the Black Churches can get underneath it and regain possession. And he lifts it very high, and that one is just outside the line. Into touch means a free kick at the halfway, and that's not exactly what you want to do to start the half. No, uh, both coaches with gray hair there, and uh, that's how you get it, uh, giving up possession that easily in a match that this closely contested will drive a coach nuts. But uh, and what, What's left? Um, said is that the Canadian defense had to back all the way up to the 10 meter line to begin the half. But then they will into the second half. A 7 7 tie here in Las Vegas. Pass. Wayward. It puts Kenya on their backs. Auma, very much a power runner out of the wing right now. Into tackle, going to drop the ball, no knock on. But still, Kenya having trouble finding the handle. Ball goes into touch. Canada with a line-out and a great opportunity. Well, I thought both teams looked exhausted at the end of that first half. And perhaps a sign of it from Kenya. Although Mike Friday says they're fitter, faster, stronger, it's not showing up. And he's looking to the subs bench, and that's some Bachi he's going to put in. So a uh, disciplined defense rewarded for Canada. I just look at these Kenyans, and I recall with clarity when they first came to the USA 7s in Los Angeles 10 years ago. And they were thin little men, not anymore. Nice break by the Canadians. Going in for another is Sean Duke. And Duke gives Canada their second lead. It is a try for Canada. I think it's the substitute, Jeffrey Hasler. Oh, he came on at the half. The power man from Okotoks, Alberta, just north of the border here. He is constantly, when he comes into a game, he makes things happen. And that is just hard power running. This is a guy that you'll know, many of your athletes down here, with a background in gridiron in American Canadian football. He plays football. great for his uh, school in Regina, Saskatchewan, where he's a running back. I think he leads his school in all-time rushing. Yep. And rushing, for those of you around the world, that means running the ball. And the conversion, well, the Nate Hirayama, it's sure thing. So from a Canadian point of view, very good. They punished that ill-discipline. The Kenyans throwing the ball into touch. Just hard run. This was the, the finish, but before that, attacking the tired defenders. Good substitution from Gary and John to get him on the field, get the fresh legs, and perhaps find that mismatch, which he did. Hearn with the restart. And a second time. Now the Kenyans want a little piece of this. They're going to run it out. Soon the Canadians get back on time. It's a legal restart. And the miss goes into tackle that time as Wanjala is taken to the deck. Wanjala back up on his feet. Down at the 22. The Canadians reeling after two consecutive restart kicks go in touch. And Canada now with a seven point lead trying to keep the Kenyans out at the 22. Good team defense with Garen John asked for at halftime. The Canadians are backing each other and helping each other out. And there is a vicious clean out of the ruck, and the referee from France Ruiz has said he's off his feet, and that's dangerous play. That's Dennis Ombachi who's on for Number nine. Kenya. And uh, as we see in sevens, the referee telling this to speed up. Even though the man is down on the field, you can see. The so the Kenya. trainer for Canada on the pitch. Take one more look at the bash here. Yeah, let's see if he used his arms. He has to wrap as he's cleaning out this ruck. It's uh, Hassler. Well, it looked uh, fairly clean to me. He wrapped his arms. I, think, I think the point went. 
still, Canada was one down on the pitch, and now the referee, Ruiz, says, let's take a timeout. And this Three minutes, Karen. 11 seconds remain in the match. Yeah, and it's here. Harry Jones there, number 11, coming on as a stop. Hiriyama, is, or sorry, Hearn, is still down on the field. And there is Nathan Hiriyama, the man number nine. He's about to throw the ball in. He is the kicker for the team, and uh, he is uh, a playmaker. It's funny, this time last year on the circuit, they challenged him to stop being the playmaker and actually go score tries and back himself. And he's done that consistently over the last year, and it's really transformed in many ways Canada's attack. Uh, he's pretty good uh, stock. His dad played for Canada as well in 15, so... He grew up in the game, and now he's obviously in the world elite when you think about a man yeah, yeah. from Canada, okay. number three in scoring on the circuit now. No, no apologies necessary. <laughs> no. There's, there's Hearn still down, and uh, he doesn't look happy, and I wonder if he took a, a shot on the head as he was cleaned out there. So, and, of uh, course, now worldwide, an emphasis in all sports on concussions. And so they'll look after him to make sure that he's okay. Hiriyama, meanwhile, puts the ball back into play. Canada getting the ball out to the wing very nicely. It's Taylor Paris. Paris across the halfway. And the whistle is blown. Ball was tossed forward on the tackle. So it'll be a scrum to Kenya. Well, two minutes 45 left here and careless there. There's a substitute on the field. Harry Jones. Scrum. Taylor scrum. Paris, as he went to post that ball, just knocked it forward. Yeah, the uh, Canada is very strong in the early phases. Uh, they score quickly as the phases go on. Not, uh, not so much in Canada's favor. The Kenyans trailing by seven. And back to the halfway line. Into tackle they go. Riding like a horseman. Harry Jones takes one down to the deck. Kenya at their own ten. Breaking a tackle. It's going to require good open field effort now. Look at that running. Brilliant running by Auma. Auma across the line. And he dots it down for the try. Oh, my goodness. Left and right. Jibbing and jabbing. Impossible to bring him down. And he's over for the try. His 12th in the World Series this season. He's not looking great now, but he did. He backed himself. He broke the tackle of Connor Trainer, And that was enough. Swerving in, out, trying to set up that sweeping defender. Great camera work from our team here. And Taylor Paris able to wrap him up. But watch the reach. Just one arm out. No problems. Downward pressure. Good try from Uma. And I'm sure if Taylor Paris has time to look at that video, he's going to ask himself, why back up on him? Yeah. Make that contact earlier. Now it's the conversion. And Beautiful here's the strike. kick. And it is wide. So Canada maintains a two-point advantage with just over a minute remaining in this match. Well, we talk about technically the role of the sweeper. So important to obviously prevent tries as Paris did in the first half. But on that occasion, by keeping the try score out wide, he made that conversion difficult. And in these windy conditions, that may be the difference as Canada leading here by two points, one conversion. Friday is looking to make some tactical changes here. He wants new blood on, and that is... Uh, Davis Chenge. Well, Davis Chenge is going to go on. Looks like Uma may have hurt himself as he went over the line. The ankle not looking good. Uma's going to get up the pitch because the clock is now running. Kenya needs a pair. Don't forget, drop goals are part of the score here. And would you wow. imagine? So he puts the ball into touch. So the Canadians did it twice to begin the half. Now Kenya does it to end the half, and that may end their chances with 30. Seven seconds remaining in the match. It is a free kick, so Canada will have to play it. They can't kick the touch and take the penalty, so they will want to keep possession, run down the clock, and not be turned over. They're running one of their set plays. That's another substitute. Nice good hand work right there, Dalla. Dalla hit high, could have knocked it on, did not. Kept it in the tackle. Here's that big hard runner, Hassler. Hassler with a good pass back outside to Jones. Jones breaks away. Jones headed towards the six. He's taken down five meters short. Canadians pressing now. They're going to get a kick. Yeah, and a, a quick tap from Paris. Paris out. out. One. Put it down. Dalla. Nanyak Dalla. And Canada finishes with Flair. Defending the two points advantage. They'll come away with a try to end this one. Well, huge uh, team play there. Jones got tapped down. The captain of the team who hasn't been starting in previous games, Nanyak Dalla, on field. Watch Paris. Good vision. Wasn't selfish. Offered it up to his captain. 
And this is huge, not only for the win that this is against last week's finalists, but also points differential. Canada didn't go through to the second quarterfinal round in the uh, Cup last year because of points differential, so that extra try may help. All right, Nate, here we are. I'm going to try to put two more in the bank. And that deposit fails, so to speak, but not Canada, as they take Game 3, a spectacular 19-12 finish. Canada with the win. Well, the crowd certainly enjoyed that magnificent win there for Canada. 19 points to 12 over Kenya. And the Sam Boyd Stadium here on the outskirts of Las Vegas. Well, we've had some great action already. Fiji got us kicked off. They got a win over England. Portugal beaten by Scotland. And this one, South Africa versus Uruguay. Well, South Africa currently fourth equal in this HSBC Sevens World Series behind New Zealand, Kenya, and Samoa. These teams have met six times in the Bass in South Africa. Well, they're a fully professional outfit, and Paul True, their coach, selects a very experienced team. Up front, Frankie Horn and Chris Dry had real physicality. Watch out for Conroll Hemmix. But this game is also about the bench. Watch out for Branko de Bria and Tushutso and Lovani, who had real pace in this South African outfit. For Uruguay, they are the current South American champions and this outing in Las Vegas will give them valuable game time as in two weeks they head to Rio de Janeiro to play in a qualifying tournament for the Rugby Sevens World Cup that will be held in Moscow in the last week of June. The Ormachia brothers line up for the first time in the Sevens jersey. Their father, Diego, captained Uruguay in 15s and also coached at the Rugby World Cup in 2003. All these players are amateur. So this is a real David and Goliath 